I'm talking relationships Worth more than money No time for the fake or the phony Tweezy drop the gym It's so evident Link up with the gang I'm talking relationships Worth more than money Ooh, in that flip turn, baby no, okay. flip. What you know about it? Um, I played that little graduation party yeah. one time. It really caught me off guard, though, because I felt like I was like, everybody can see my cards. Yeah. I can tell what that person has when we flip <laughs> over. So, I mean, if you can remember, mm -hmm. but I, I was taking people out left and right. Yeah. Um. Well, check this out. Every every podcast, I do things differently. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, this is like the intro now. Surprise, yeah, so I, I, okay. might, I might just hey guys. hit a song or something for y'all, but this time... Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hit no song because why? We got too much history. We got too much history. And it's it's only great. It's only right to have both of y'all. Just go ahead and just introduce yourselves because, yeah. I thought you was going to say sing a song. And I was I, like, yeah, I thought that was what was coming. No, I was like, no. what? I was going to bring the keyboard out for you, though, too. Okay, man. because yeah. I have no songs in me. <laughs> yeah. I cannot but sing. But no, man, y'all had just did a dope, intimate concert. Uh -huh. Concert, I can call it a concert show. Yeah, yeah. we wanted it to be uh -huh. a concert for the people. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. a concert. And did y'all get the video back yet? We did. We have the okay. footage. So footage. that'll be coming out soon. Super crispy. Top of the quarter. Yes. So y'all did this intimate concert. I had a huge weekend. Like, I was super busy. You all know me. I'm always in the house. Uh -huh. I was outside that weekend. Mm. And um, I That's couldn't terrible. miss y'all concert. And I pulled up and I'm like, oh, uh -huh. I remember this spot. And I pulled up and what I was, was like. What you doing at that spot? So um, Marcus Allen was oh, uh, yeah. he had a show there like two two three years ago. Okay. Mm. So I pulled up and um, you know, you know, show love or whatever, and uh, yeah. So when I came, I was like, oh yeah, this 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 lit, intimate. It was a good time. Yep. And y'all put on a dope ass performance, might Thank I say. You. But uh, without further ado. The ladies of the hour. Let's take it away. Come on. You do it. Oh, all right. Danielle Joy, we are Queen David together. Female production duo. Hottest in the streets right now. Um, pew, 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 pew. Right. Produce, play keys. I sing and write. That's it. About love, majority of the time. What's your name? <laughs> oh, D Marie. I forget. You know, we changed. You know, I go by D Marie, but then we yeah. just start going by Queen David. So it's just a thing, you know. Yeah. But I'm yeah. D Marie. So the, so I get everybody on here, this is Relationships Worth More Than Money podcast because I feel yeah. like um, in order for you to get to the money, the relationship that you create yeah. can definitely get you to that that threshold and, and more. But I feel mm -hmm. like the relationship you have to value. So it's only right to have y'all two on here because what I call y'all, y'all remember what I call y'all? The female division. The female mm. division. And I swear to God, like, because I never <laughs> seen two women play instruments and sing the way y'all sing. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's not no cap to it. It's for real. You know what I mean? So, like, I love seeing when y'all actually doing music and, you know, it's it's a uh, a momentous term. Because why? Oh, you like that word? Momentous. Yeah, that, I that's what I did. I, I really like that word. Yeah. Like yeah. Momentous. It is. Momentous. But also, I want to say, giving credit back, Every, every time we try to do something together, we always come out with some type of, you know, product. When you ask us to come and, you know, be on projects that you got going on, yeah. whenever yeah. we come to the studio, we always, it's a good work environment. It is. Yeah. I, I try to make it, you know what I mean, like a, um, I'm me, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a cool person. I'm laid back. I'm chill. Like, I don't never, like, want to be, like, angry or nothing like that. Like, mm -hmm. but y'all bring the, y'all bring the energy back. So it's, it's like when you working with, and y'all know we work with different people all the time mm -hmm. and you get those different types of energy that just don't feel right. You know what I mean? Different styles. Yeah. Different styles. It, it, you can call it different styles. Different you know, <laughs> no, some things just don't work. Some things yeah. just don't work. And some, some sessions will be just weird. don't, yeah. some sessions just don't session right. You and we, I mean? and every time we do a session or if we just kicking it and it just become a session, right, like right. it's always great energy, great vibes. And that's what I love about y'all. But, I want to go back in time to where when y'all first started. Okay. You know what I mean? When y'all first started and when y'all first met. So, Deja. Back in the day when I was young, I'm not a... Uh. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> we, I mean, we started in a studio. A hit HQ. 
in Woodbridge. Bridge. And we met through a mutual producer, um, Rob. Shout out, Rob. And he brought me there because he was looking for artists to write. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? For other artists. So I had just left the studio that it just didn't work out. The vibe wasn't there for me. So I came to this new studio, met Nicole. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was going that. by D. Nicole at the time. D. Nicole. D. Nicole. And yeah. D. Marie. That's, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was like, oh, cool. But she didn't like me when we first crossed paths. That's, That's not, it's not a true story, but I'll let you. I'll let okay. Her let so, her like, I, yeah, I was saying, so long story short, we're in a session. Uh, they gave me all these beats. I was like, all right, I'll be back tomorrow with, with all of them written. You know what I'm saying? And I come back, and it's like four songs. I'm singing them. She was like, nah. I was like, all right. Flips page, second one. Nah, I don't like that one either. Flip page, third one. I mean, all of them. Nah, I said, oh, okay. I don't know who this girl is, who this girl is, but I was like, I don't know how I feel about her. Mm. But she's going to think that, I, that it would happen over differently. So how your version go, Nick? <laughs> All right. My version is a little different. And let me set the scene a little bit prior to. I've been whole time just producing in the basement, right? Right. Just got out of college, got me an iMac, got my different pieces, put something together. And so I got introduced to that studio by someone I was working with in the government there, her husband on mm-hmm. that studio. Yeah. And so I'm in there, I'm fresh, I'm green, like I'm just... No one's ever put words to my to my beat, right? Right. But as a producer, you kind of have your own feel in your mind of how you think something's going to go. Right. And so when I, we gave the beats and then she came back with the songs, in my mind, did not gel with what she had given me. So I was like, oh, I don't think that fits how I wanted it to sit. But mm-hmm. how would she know that? Because it's not like I gave her like a melody or anything to go off Nothing. with. Nothing. But right. it just didn't sit well. But I was not like, Mm-mm, nah, that's crazy. I yeah. was just like... Okay. Yeah. Like it, it wasn't anything harsh or right. aggressive. She trying to make it seem like I was cutting her down from the first song in the note that came out. I just was like, okay. What what, what year was this? Well, I don't, I'm not good with years. Um mm-hmm. I wanna say like twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. So ten years ago? Yeah, I think we're coming yeah. up on ten years. Yeah. Yeah, Man, yeah but years. Mm, but moral of the story, like when we met, it was just we started out really as just business mm-hmm. like completely yeah, yeah. business that we decided to start working outside of the studio just writing and producing to see what we can come up with because she was really the only person that was serious that was in that studio so mm-hmm. um and then our friendship our best friendship came after that just yeah. from working and always being around each other because of music okay so when did when did the uh time come for y'all to like move in together Oh, that was down. That was a little ways down the road. We yeah. had done, we had done a single, a project by then, mm-hmm. and it just the spaces we had basically at that time set up two different studios. Yeah, mm-hmm. and there was a studio in Fredericksburg, and then there was a studio where I was in Alexandria. So we were back and forth between those two studios. Right. So when the time came to basically put the studios together, work together, be in the same location, you know, that's how we came together. But we were working. Basically, just up and down 95 in those two different spots for a right. while. We built up two very, very good studios to collaborate with. So, so with those studios, did y'all, like, put out any music that time? Or y'all was just creating songs? I mean, we have a lot of stuff in the vault still from those times between them two studios. But, like, Down is one of the songs that came out of that studio. I mm-hmm. mean, did the whole of collection, the... Project collection that might have all come. I think that all came out of out the, of the two, two studios. Yeah, two separate for real, studios. For real. You know, we actually created more music separate than we did yeah, when we that's actually. I was gonna say when we actually decided to live together, the amount of music that we made separately was a lot more. But I think at that time, though, you know, like when you're growing with someone or with a group, mm-hmm. it's like you got to do that groundwork so that y'all can learn each other, right. learn your style, learn how. To function around each other, and because we have two separate lanes, we don't cross each other. So that's why it's kind of like perfect the way that we marry. Because <clears throat> because now that we know our niche, mm-hmm. it's like we can make music like that at the drop of the dime. Right. They don't. We don't have to spend twelve hours in a session to create something. We know an hour into our own sessions, like 
nothing's gonna come of this, or we just chilling, or we really got something, and we made two or three songs. So it's you know. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. What well, um, with the 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 back and forth from Fredericksburg to Alexandria. What did you feel like was the the thing to do as far as like the like was it R and B was it like so like what was the genre that y'all really was trying to push? I know Deja always writes about love, but when I first <laughs> <laughs> when I first met her, I was like, "Ooh, you, your voice, Neo Soul, it's giving me Neo." She was like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, uh-uh, uh, uh-uh. I don't do Neo Soul." Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, oh, I'm." My bad, I just felt like <laughs> that was a good place for you to sit. You know? yeah. My bad. So we kind of ended up in the in the R and B like live music because we all throughout that whole time though we were always doing shows and mm-hmm. we were everywhere in DC. Running we went to cities. Uh, we met a lot of different people and they were like, "Oh, your sound, your sound would be good in Philly." So we went to Philly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We did open mic in Philly and we went to Atlanta, worked with people like we were just. Every, everywhere. Literally everywhere. Everywhere. Doing shows and putting together bands to do something. I was just, last night when I went to the sneaker ball, I was around the corner from one of the places we did a show at, one of the last shows we did with like a full band. Mm-hmm. It's this, it's a church that's like painted with all the graffiti. Oh, yeah. um, it's um the ra- something about, not a ram, something about a ram? No. I don't know if it's a ram. No, it's like it's the DC bad. art museum or something. It's not like that. bad. Right. But it's like colorful and graffiti. It's over in, mm-hmm. I think, like South by baseball field. By National Stadium and all that. So it's over there. And it's like one of the last places we did a show at in DC. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I remember being over here doing a show. But when we were separate, we were, or we had those separate studios, we were always working, always putting out, always doing performance. Doing Turning shows. up a whole bunch of gigs. Yeah. So like the live music yeah. and the R&B, we were, that's what we was living at. That's dope. I uh, I didn't I didn't know y'all was traveling like that. I thought y'all was doing like more like regional, just in the in the DMV area. Yeah, I mean we ran that circuit crazy. Like in we DC, know we yeah. do know a lot of people in this area because of that, and I think a lot of artists should do that. You know, mm-hmm. in whatever area they are, so that they know people in their area. But we definitely fell back after. You know, I mean after you run the circuit so so much, you mm-hmm. know, you try different things or whatever. But yeah. We go anywhere. Anywhere. Like, especially me um, being at A&T and then being in the band and then being in TBS and KKSI. Like, everybody is musically inclined. So, what's, it was like... What's TBS? Yeah. Wait, what is TBS? I was damn sure about to say TBS and KKSI. What the hell is that? The Aggie call. Go ahead. Aggie Pride? What you mean? No, I'm saying. Like, um, you know, like North Carolina, Carolina like A&T. North Carolina uh, A&T. Yeah. Aggie Pride Nationwide. Shout out to everybody that's in the Blue and Gold Marketing Machine. Loyalty, all that. Ooh, that should sound like an insurance gang. company uh, <laughs> slogan. Gang, gang. Yeah. No. <laughs> nationwide. <laughs> no, Aggie Pride is Nationwide. Ask about it. Like, you be out here in the streets. You need anything. Yeah. Be everywhere. But, um, no, TBS, Top Beta Sigma, and Kappa Kappa Psi, they're banned fraternity. So it's like, you, you have to- be in both? No, no, just one okay. that. Well, KKSI is for is for the men. TBS is for oh. the women, and so they're band fraternities, and you just have to be a part of the band at that college in okay. order to be a part. And so, um, at a lot of the black schools, mm-hmm. you know, we take that, we hold that tight, real serious. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm, I'm trying to get them to make me an honorary. Honestly, yeah. a golden delight. I would have been one of the girls dancing. Yeah, um, the, you can the, see me uh, doing that, right? The uh, what they call them? The golden majorette. Delight. Yeah, but Golden Light's not just Majorists. They're yeah. dancers and Majorists. They do both. They take it Golden up and Delight? Out. Yeah, Golden yeah. Light. That's the dancers at for A&T. a and Yeah. Okay. So they do both. They do they twirl and they dance. So okay. a lot of schools are separate in different situations. Yeah. So we do it all, all at the same time. But because everybody that I was around is in is musically inclined, like once we got out of school, it's like, oh, you're in Charlotte? Mm-hmm. Like we drove down to Charlotte and did one of, like, we did a really good, a That's really a good song. Really good song. Um, with one of my friends that was in KK Side in Charlotte, and we pulled up on his studio. Yeah. We worked what is the all name through of the that night. Record? Um, put you to bed. Yeah, see, I would never release that now wow. for me as a as an artist, but it is a fantastic a song. song. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? It's not what secular. All the music all, is. It, oh, you're funny. You, you absolutely right. But why you wouldn't put it out? Why I need nah, to hear it? The deep. It's, it's like, a great song. It's giving Big Mama will put that out. Okay. 
Yeah, but, big mama. But big mama that's put that out. Sync. We put it out for sync. Like put it on like yeah. a movie or something. It's true. It's yeah, a solid we, record. It is a solid yeah. record. And like my my best friend that was <laughs> went to ODU, he was doing photography at the time. Yeah, thine old dominion. That's where I went. <laughs> mm. yeah. And he was doing photography and videography. And so he followed us. Like we picked him up in Fayetteville and then he recorded everything for yeah. us. And Tell like, him about the drive. Don't forget we, that part in the background. <laughs> we started, we drove to Charlotte. We drove to Charlotte. And then I was like, oh, and we were headed to Atlanta. And I was like, oh, um, I'm going to pick you up. If you, you'll you do like video for us. He was like, yeah, I'll ride. You know, I have my two door, two door Accord that I still have to this day. He about mm-hmm. six something. He was in the backseat stuff. But the ride from Charlotte to Fayetteville, I thought it was closer in my mind. Mind you, we was in the studio all night. We was in the studio and all we were night. Tired. And then we was in the studio all night. Living the studio life. Yeah. And so we drove out to Fayetteville to pick him up, scooped him up, headed down to Atlanta. He stuffed in the back seat. But we played that record for him. And this is like, we first starting off. And he was like, this is, y'all did this? Yeah. It's nice. I, I got something here. Like, <laughs> you know, like right. when you when you're friends or people that know you do stuff, but when mm-hmm. they're like surprised and impressed that, yeah. about stuff, it's like, cause y'all hear all the stuff I do. Right. So when something really like catch you, it's like, it's like oh yeah. Okay, that's what y'all doing. I like it. Yeah. So put you to bed is that record? That's one of the earlier records that we still have. Why haven't I heard it? We you'll have an exclusive listen oh, to this go. right I can absolutely after. play it for you. After. Maybe yeah. we'll send you a snippet. To put. But that's the record that's like on a hard drive that was sent in an email that mm. ain't never made it's it. One of them. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like I had to get it from him. He and had Nick to got a bunch of hard drives. A lot of. Them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them. And they're inappropriately stored. So I thank the Lord every day that they ain't crashed on me. Facts, facts. Because they will crash. They have to. Uh-huh. I'm trying to get into the cloud, but. Yeah. The cloud the cloud didn't switched up on us. It's got a lot going with it. Yeah. So, okay. So, North Carolina a and ODU. Uh-huh. Y'all, got, y'all got all of this music. And y'all going up and down the East Coast. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh-huh. Y'all uh-huh. running up the East Coast, tearing it up. Right. Why do you feel that any artist, um that's trying to make it should should do the same like far as hitting the open mic and the different shows and creating a and did y'all have music out by the way when y'all was hitting these shows or were y'all just performing sh- songs that y'all already created but wasn't put out yet so before we linked together and became Queen David I was always an artist Dee Marie so I had music out um but the music that I had I had a mixtape out and the music that I had was like whole bunch of producers like throw away mm. so it's just like because at the time it's like I'll take anything and that's really where my pain got nice is because people like oh I don't like this I was like I bet you I can write to it and make you like it. you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. that kind of thing so um I I mean we are I feel like going after music is going to be a continual race but right. it's at your own pace you know what I'm saying and we're nowhere near where we want to be but because we have connected with a lot of people in our area and know people up and down the East Coast, some in the West Coast as well, you know what I mean? I feel like it's only a matter of time mm-hmm. before something hits and clicks the way that we want it to. Yeah. I think also, like, the name of the podcast, Hit Me With It. Yeah. Relationships work more than money. Okay. Right. So right. it's like once we're up and down the East Coast, we got good at being in a room and figuring out who was really important in that room. Right. Yeah. Because there's usually not the loudest person. It's the person that's sitting in the back that's just, yeah. they just making sure stuff went right. That's you me. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah, just like, me. we went yeah, up to the, New York. I'm in the back. Yeah. We yeah. went up to New York person and we stood, yeah, we stood in a room and we figured out who was the person to get to know. And we've been able to do that in a lot of rooms, been able to build mm-hmm. those relationships and be able to call on people that, have all types of knowledge and, you know, understanding that mm-hmm. given the right opportunity, we'll be able to, like, rely mm-hmm. on that relationship. But we didn't build it from, you know, staying in the house, producing in the room, not getting out, not doing shows, not just connecting with people. Because one of the mm-hmm. people that engineered our, or mixed our album, The Collection, he's in Cali. <clears throat> right. So it's like, we didn't get that connection just by, you know, Googling him. It was right. through word of mouth from a friend that I knew who moved out there. And so we went out there, we linked with them. You know, we connected with those people, but it was all based on the relationship. Okay. All right. So, like, for artists, though, like, why do you feel like it's important 
to do that, like mm-hmm. to, to get in the in those rooms and do those shows and go up and down the East Coast and because it's not it's like it's like your own version of a chitlin circuit. Like I was hitting yeah. right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? mean, just it goes up like you know, your your relationships are everything. Your name and your your character is everything. I literally got a call last week from someone that I used to sing with. It was a connection actually through church. And um, I have not talked to, and shout out Dr. Richard Debro. He is a um, highly like, what is it? When they have a lot of accolades. Decorated. Decorated, yeah. thank you. He is highly decorated in regards to music and orchestra, live instrumentation, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. He hit me. I haven't talked to him in years. And he hit me up. He has some connections in television and they're starting projects. I don't know what those projects are. You know, can't talk about all that stuff. But he said, well, he, when somebody gave him the opportunity, he mentioned me and brought me up because of the relationship that we have in our in my hard work and your ethic. Mm-hmm. So to go back to that, it's important for artists, even if nothing comes from the show, even if nothing comes from the free thing that you did for this person or that person, paid or not paid, like your relationship with people is what's going to gonna carry you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's going to re- let people remember you years later about right. someone like, oh, I know that this person can do this or do that. So it's important to have relationships. Like you said, they're way more than money. Way more than money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's 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 um it's a lot of people out here that's trying to do it the cut corner fast way. And yeah, and I yeah. think a lot of times the the younger, the youth, like um, I feel like they trying to just go smack at it, which is is dope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do it, do it your way, but stop trying to go at it for the money because yeah. <clears throat> the money gonna hurt you every time because you you putting an expectation on something that doesn't have an expectation. Right, right. and you it's not gonna mean? last. It's just not gonna last. Yeah, the money's like, not gonna last either. It's not gonna last, and you can get it like you can definitely get the exposure, get what you want quickly. Yeah, mm-hmm. but as quick as it comes, as quick as it's gonna fall apart. Exactly. Right. And especially if you don't have anybody fighting for you in the rooms and you haven't built up your business understanding on the back end of being able to do the music, you're going to get taken advantage of. You're going to be on an unsung. Yo. Yeah. I don't want that for anybody. I don't want unsung? people. Yeah. I don't want you to be the next unsung. I don't want to be the next unsung. How many people going to be on an unsung How talking many about some Icon the 360? Yeah. How many? I gave up everything just yeah. to get the one thing and now I want it back. Right, I just I just seen one on uh on um Shannon Sharp his uh podcast, mm-hmm. and Kurt Franklin was saying like how he he lost every he didn't have nothing in the mm-hmm. beginning because he said he was signing bad deals. It's the reading for us. Yeah, you know, PSA, y'all. Let's just read. Let's take the time. time. Don't track. let nobody rush you yeah. and read it. And if somebody and if you have to pay. An entertainment, an entertainment, an entertainment lawyer. Just pay lawyer. it. Yeah. Pay it up front. I don't care if it's fifteen hundred dollars for them to read right. it. Shout out to I got a plug for y'all. If y'all need a lawyer, right. hit me up. He yeah. knows an entertainment lawyer. Have them read it. Pay the money because the three sixty deal is not worth it. You gonna get that five hundred thousand up front, and then you are gonna end up owing mm-hmm. everything else. And you won't be able to see it for like ten, fifteen years. Right. right. We're gonna be begging for your master's <laughs> back in twenty years. Right. No, I don't we want that. Knew for you. a shorty that was. That got a payment from a song that he that blew up. It was like a number. One. I forget the yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. He got his settlement check, but it was fifteen years later after yeah. the song, and yeah. had to fight for it. Had to fight to for nail what he for did. it. Right. And you know how sick that is on the inside when the song is going up, right? And I'm getting nothing from it. And you ain't on no, no recognition. Yeah. You ain't with them. Right. They <laughs> just <laughs> on stage. Right. 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 And, and, and they asked you for another beat. Right. Crazy. Yeah, that now that's that, that's crazy. Now that's, you and then you pay for the one. first one, right? That's crazy. Ain't no way in hell. <laughs> you ain't giving no. you ain't giving them the second. Ain't no second one. What? what? But you know, but it blew up the first time, so you yeah. you just betting on it. Yeah, but at the same time, man, and that's the thing. It's like when we doing music, it's it's so hard to like trust. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? These individuals, yeah, because yeah. like. I know for sure if it's me, you, and you, yeah. we doing a song. I'm like, yo, send me your IPI number. Send me every this. time. Send me that so I can make sure I annotate, put it on there. 
Because like I was telling um, in the other podcast, I was like, I might have messed up somebody's name, but that IPI number right. is going to still connect. It's going to still connect. Still connect it's gonna grab at the end of the day, this is who you are. Right. Um, it's like your social security number. You know right. what I'm saying? But yeah. um, some some people, man, it's just like you try to you try to educate them, you try to educate them, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they still going to hit that wall and crash. Yeah. I mean, but you, uh, you're going to crash. Like, you, yeah. I mean, I've lost money. Not 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 yeah. graves amount. Money. <laughs> Let me be clear. But what I'm saying is, is like sometimes you'll put money into a project. This mm-hmm. is what I'm saying, and you're expecting a result, and you might not get it. So that's what I mean by that. Yeah. Oh, no one. You stole, wasn't stolen. From no me. one stole like, money because I didn't know. Because I read that. everything that I signed. Yeah. Okay. Because when it says in all the lands, in all the universes, or in perpetuity, in perpetuity. Don't y'all. Yeah. Take a second. Just be aware. Of perpetuity. Yeah. In Listen. all the lands and all the universe. Do y'all know where the universe is? Yeah. Because they and say all if the they lands? go to another universe, they still own what you did in this. That's so, people. That's if you crazy. go to Mars, and it says all the lands and all the universes, you can still not make money in Mars. Right, they'd be bumping your song in right. Mars, and you ain't getting no money. <laughs> I'm just letting no you know. None. Read your contract, okay? Yeah. Please. And it's and that's I think too. Um, that's education within itself, and I think like for us, you know what I mean. I be trying to spread word and password and, and mm-hmm. give gain. But um, you do a good job at that. Let me. You do because when we first met, you were like, "Oh, y'all don't have this." Oh, okay. So do this, do this, X, Y, Z. Right. Like, you're good yeah. at definitely sharing the information, not gatekeeping. So. No, I can't. But that's why it's coming back to you. It's going. I'm sorry. Sorry, I got excited yeah. in that moment. It hit you. I it just. I'm just saying because it's gonna come back to you, please. Be- Knock the glasses <laughs> off. Right. Let me put them back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. I got excited. Let me yeah. relax. I'm just saying because you're. A good connector. Mm -hmm. And you're one of the few people that we've met in this journey that's like, you're not trying to scam nobody. You're honest. Good guy. You're not trying to (laughs) um, harass anybody. Yeah. Okay. You like, and you, it's like an even exchange. You know how sometimes you're always around people and it's like you always giving, you always putting yeah. out. You know what I'm saying? Like you're you're willing to do it. And that's why that's going to come back to you. That's why the things yeah, that you touch it. are going to be gold. Appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I just I just think like um, coming from Detroit, like we, like I didn't have much. You know what I'm saying? But I had a, I had a, I had a, my grandma, um, my grandma instilled in me like, you know what I mean? Just, just give, like don't never... If you're gonna take something from somebody, make sure you're giving, mm-hmm. giving something uh-huh. back. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I'm leaving here with something. Like Denzel Washington said. Like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm I'm leaving here with something, but I'm gonna give you something too. Like you yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like it's an exchange. Yeah, it's an even exchange. But sometimes it's not even an even exchange. And like Ben said when he was here, he was like, sometimes I'm I'm the ninety and you the ten. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or sometimes mm-hmm. I'm I'm giving I'm giving ten and you giving ninety. Right. You know what I mean? And it's and that's how with me it's like me I try to give more. Than what I receive because mm-hmm. at the same time it's like I know how much I care about the music and I know mm-hmm. how much I care about relationship. Yeah. So once I feel like if the relationship ain't going in the the slightest great direction, it's like sometimes I just pull back. I ain't I ain't taking nothing from you, but you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm still there. Like if you if you need me to be there, but I'm gonna let you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, okay, you want some bullshit. Oh. But <laughs> Gotta be honest. Yeah, gotta, be, uh, and that's the thing. <laughs> I think, I think a lot of times people they don't understand what it's like for somebody to be straight up with them. Yeah, that's true. coming from here because I know it's a lot of it's. So you got DC. DC mm-hmm. is was itself is in itself like it's different type of people. Then you got you got Maryland people, and then you got Virginia, Northern Virginia. Then mm-hmm. you got yeah, like Central Virginia. Right. So it's mm-hmm. like everybody acts different. But for me, I look at Northern Virginia as like the suburbs and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's yeah. a nice yes. area. It's a nice place yeah. to live. You get mm-hmm. nice quality schools. Yes. Right. And it's like the <clears throat> DC people might've moved back there, moved down there or whatever. But I think a lot of times these kids are, um, they're take they're, they're taking a lot of things for granted when I'm trying to give it to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, if I'm giving you the game, take the, take it and steal it into what I, what you want to do. But don't abuse it. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes a lot of people take the kindness for weakness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, that's funny because I'm not a sugar coder right. at all. And me and Nicole have been in numerous situations where 
I can say something. Like, me and her will always, can't nobody ever split us up. Right. There will never be business that's conducted yeah. with me pot. and not with her. Or with her and not with me. That's just not how we get down. Mm-hmm. People try to do it, though. They yeah. do. And it never they, work. It never works. They try to do it because I am a more vocal out of us two. And I am straightforward. It's like, I could say something in a very nice, you mm-hmm. know, way straightforward. And then all of a sudden, they'll start directing all in Korean business to her. Right. As if, like, I've done something. But we're the same. Yeah. We want, it's not, that's not getting split up. So, it's just like, if you don't like it, then maybe you need to take what is being said, take what applies to you, and the rest, let it yeah. be. Yeah. Because I, I, like, and that's the thing that I love about y'all is, like, y'all are two peas in a pot. Y'all ain't, ain't, ain't nothing coming in between y'all. Yeah. You know what nah. I'm saying? And, and I think that's what... As women, you know what I'm saying, it's dope because you know women, y'all are cr- y'all are break up so fast, oh, yeah, yeah. get into right. it, all of that. You know what I mean? Over the silliest thing, mm-hmm. but It'd the be fact important that important at the time, yeah, yeah. But it's like y'all y'all like stick to it and y'all stay on top. Y'all stand on business. If, if somebody trying to holler at you and try to get like a, a deal done with you, like mm-hmm. hold on, let me go talk to my, right. my partner. Let me it's go talk. Always be the conversation. Yeah. The conversation is always, and that's come up over and over and over again between us and people, you know, direct toward one of us thinking that that's eliminating the other person from the picture, but yeah, we're always going to show up. Yeah. And it used to happen a lot in the beginning, but I think that is what allowed us to become really strong friends mm-hmm. because we realized like, oh, she not going to flip and I'm not going to flip or I'm right. not going to flip. She not going to flip. So it's like, we know there is nothing that's going to, we always say, we will quit this music thing and keep our friendship before right. any yeah. of this, before our friendship ever falls off the table. Right. That shit is just not important. Music music is important, but the chase of the music and yeah. business and all that stuff yeah. means nothing right. Right, over our relationship. Yeah. And that's what I was saying, like, because I think, like, a lot of the kids now, um, it's like they're, they're more of, like, a, a groupie. It's like, mm-hmm. I give you the game. And then I introduce you to, you know, people. And then it's like you just, now you, now you, you, you attracted to them. You just grab yeah. onto them. You hop. Yeah. You hop. A lot of people hop. And it's like, mm-hmm. why, like, why would you do that when I'm, mm-hmm. I'm introducing you to more people? Right. But they know what's up. The thing is, is people know what's up. Yeah. People, we, we might not be like, like I said, where we are now, but people know what's up. Yeah. They know who we are. And I, and, 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 and sooner or later, you know what I mean? People, I just people loyalty is big. So it's like mm-hmm. when I see that, when I see that with people, and it's like, damn, these kids ain't understanding the what loyalty is. It's like, let me just hop, hop, hop. Like they playing uh Mario. You know how you jump <laughs> yeah, on the yeah, little yeah, curve, yeah. the little. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. So I mean, at the end of the day, you know, they'll figure it out. Like I just they you know, I mean, they will, I just, they you know, I just try to get I give game. Once once I feel like my game don't need to be given no right. more. I just pull back and then I start working on the next person. The no, next that person. is called healthy boundaries, everyone. Yeah. You've got to have them. Yeah. And sometimes people don't know what that is. Sometimes yeah. it's hard. Yeah. They definitely don't know what it is. Snip, snip over here. <laughs> <laughs> let's get let's get, to, let's get to let's get to like since we on that topic, like okay. you know what I mean, how do y'all how do y'all coexist and like cause y'all women and mm-hmm. you know, y'all y'all got y'all got different, you know what I mean? mindsets, you know what I mean? All women, everybody's not the same. Right. But how do y'all get along so good? Because a lot of people can't do that. Um, I think we got mutual respect. I think that's the biggest mm-hmm. thing. It's mutual respect. It is recognition of the other person and what they're trying to do mm-hmm. and being able to be a support to that person. So it's like, like what um, was said earlier, we are in two different lanes. So there's never a need for me to cross over. I'm not about to be a singer. Right. So I just, I don't have it in me but not to give the Lord gate. Right. Yeah. So there's no need to create a competition where there's no competition. I'm mm-hmm. going to lose at every time. Right. So it's like, I need to be a support in this role instead of trying to be, you know, an agitator trying to take over or trying to direct. Like, that's not my yeah. lane to direct. Mm-hmm. So it was being in your, in your spot and doing your spot well, like doing it just. Yeah. yeah. And like two things, there is business that's conducted that has nothing to do with me and it's all about her. And when it is that, then I'm I'm second 
on, on her tail. Like, okay, yeah. what do you need? What like what do you need for this particular business? Do you need me to go run and do something? Do I got to, You know, I'm a help to her. Right. And if it's something that has to do with just me, it's okay. Well, what do you need? Because pushing either one of us forward helps us both yeah, in exactly. general. Mm-hmm. And I think too with relationships, we do the hard work. We have honest conversations, and we've had hard conversations about yeah. friendship. I don't feel like you're showing up for me, yeah. or I don't feel this. Or I, you know, period, we periodically be like, okay, well, how can I serve you better as a friend? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's things like that. And I think that is the difference. You know, we, like I said, we're different people. We have different wants and desires. But at the end of the day, we still have, we respect each other. You know what's crazy though? I think women, y'all two, like women have that conversation way more than men. Mm-hmm. A man can't be like, bro, like you ain't showing up for me. What's up with you? Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I can see like, how and that's I think it's difficult. messed up. Mm-hmm. I think it's messed up because it's like we just we still we still human. Like why yeah. we can't have that same conversation. That is true. And I think I think with us, with men, is that um people egos get in the way. I was gonna say, what are y'all scared? Yeah, like what is it? Because you know me, I'm gonna talk. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm tell I'm you. Say I'm gonna say something. I, 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 I get it out. Mean? I mean, cause but cause, but I, I think, think it is a little bit of ego. And I was gonna say that because you know what I'm saying when I feel like when a woman tells a man it's ego, then that only enhances the issue. Right. Like, like, y'all like, 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 oh, you trying to, you yeah. trying to tell me I got an ego like, problem? It's yeah. like, well, yes. But if I say it, then it's a bigger issue. Right. But for you to, you know, for you to bring that up, I think that is, but it's between, like, it goes hand in hand with both men in the, in the right. conversation. Like, it's the ego that's not going to say, like, basically, that this is hurting my feelings that you're treating me like this when I right. feel like I show up for you and you're not showing right. up for me. And it's like, mm-hmm. we can't have that conversation. Yeah, and I think I think um, that's where we lose as men um, because like, it's not hard. Like it's not hard to say, "Bro, I fucked up." Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean. Like instead of being passive, right? Like yeah. oh, I, I, I can see, I can mm-hmm. see where that where that might have made you uh, upset. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying. Like so, do you feel like you have any relationships with another yeah, male where you? Where you can be honest. Oh, Kadeem, shit, I was, rolling. I was like, gonna you know say, like, I was gonna say, yeah, I feel it's like definitely Kadeem. like Kadeem for sure. Like we've been, we've been mm-hmm. bros since shit, July, what January two thousand four, almost twenty years. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, and we literally have those conversations. Like, bro, I think, I think you, um, you need to fix this. I think you need to fix that. Yeah, yeah. even with other people relationships mm-hmm. like that, he see mm-hmm. that I'm with. Yeah. And he'd be like, bro, I think you need to go talk to that person again. And if I already talked to that person, I tell him, I'm like, look, bro, I didn't already. <laughs> I had that, I had that conversation. Mm-hmm. Like it, I can't keep being a bigger person. Like right. you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna just fall. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna fall back because I can't keep. Because now it's, it's starting to feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over, and it, and it's not the person's not understanding it. Yeah. So when they're not understanding it, okay, cool, no worries. I pull back. I, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Next That's lane. Sound effect. You know what I mean? Healthy boundaries. <laughs> hit, hit, that, hit, hit the blinker. Right. Left blinker. All right, I'm in another <laughs> yeah. lane. But yeah, but. but Kadeem and them is definitely, um, he's definitely one for sure. Um, because shit, even with my own family, like issue that I got with my family, like yeah. Kadeem, Kadeem even tries to reach out to to the family. And that's members, beautiful. You know that's the kind of relationship like you you would like to have with everyone around you, but that's right. just that it just, it's, it's just that's not real. No, it's it's not realistic. It takes, that's not what realistic. I was gonna say. Yeah. And I think it might seem like women have like this large tribe. Women that's yeah. all that we can do that with everybody. But we but know. the honest and truth is it's yeah. not all ten of us right. that rock together. It's you have your pockets and you can rely on other people outside in your big tribe. But the relationship, like that deep relationship where you can go back and forth and support people and be honest and yeah. vulnerable, mm-hmm. that's not as big as it may seem on the I think we're kind of eight people. Yeah. yeah. I'd be like, yeah. yo, am I bro, am I fucking up? Am I tripping? <laughs> and he'd be like, no, nah, bro, I don't, or he'd be like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't or think maybe this, I would have. Yeah. Yeah. We were just talking about how Nicole, how she'll correct somebody. I was like, ah, nah, like I'm gonna just tell you. Yeah. And she was like, well, I mean, maybe you could have attempted it this way, or like maybe word I choice. would have yeah. did something. And word I was like, so I gotta tone? work on delivery. Yeah. yeah, I gotta work on delivery. So like, our I gotta thing, work on delivery. <laughs> and, the, and the Marines, and the Marines, you know, tact. Yeah, that's it. You know, that tact is different. Well, Ooh. for me, it's yeah. just like sometimes it's like I. Hate having to repeat myself. Over and you know what's about crazy about you, baby? Thing. Your mom and dad is what? Marines. And you. Simplified. Yeah, and you. <laughs> you be like that all the time, like. I, but I feel it yeah. though, because it's like it's it's like you get one with me. I don't even give you three strikes. 
Oh yeah, I'm better at giving you know strikes, but like once I've had enough, yeah. it's a wrap. It's a wrap. I'm not. There's nothing to talk about because I, we've already either had conversations. Right. We've already. I've already opened up the floor for you to either. When I say do wrong, like you've either done something or I've done something. We've talked about. We, you know, mm-hmm. what I mean. But like, at the time, you know why I was thinking about this other day? because my asset in a relationship is me. Right. That's how, that's how confident I know of the worth that I bring to a relationship. Mm-hmm. Just me as my person. You right. know what I'm saying? Because I'm a loyal, honest, real, transparent. Yeah. What you see, what you get. If I rock with you, I rock with you. So if you can't, everyone, I, I'm learning that people are not like me. Right. And just because they're not like me doesn't make them bad. Mm-hmm. So I give... I have opened up a lot of grace for that, but at the same time, what's your sign? <laughs> My sign has nothing to do. Oh, it has with a this. lot. I'm a Gemini. Oh yeah, that's why. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's what? that that's has a lot to do what? with it. What is it? What is it? it Good. Because I mean, y- y'all y'all like a light switch. <laughs> y'all a light switch. A light switch. Yeah, like you often on the two person. Like you can turn you can turn that off. You can turn it on, and then yeah. you, can, you can turn it off. Let me tell you something, baby. When that light turn off, uh, you might as well cut that bill. <laughs> it ain't coming cut back the bill. on. Okay? Cut the bill. Cut the bill. Cut the cord. Cut the bill. Cut the cord. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> hey. look, y'all. Um, What's this solar power? Not the solar power. Got some you know, up this on. is why yeah. we're different. She's look, got so the you battery. Got, got a battery. Right. Yeah. Got the battery pack. You cut me yeah, off, but maybe, I'm gonna come back. Yeah. Maybe the person with the solar power might might convince me. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You ain't got no backup plan. You just yeah. Got the battery back. Sorry, they gonna cut back on. I no, nah, you good. You good. <laughs> let's let's get on let's get on this this other adventure that y'all y'all have, um, which I think is dope. Um, I even thought about doing it too. Um, so y'all used to be like, "Hey, we ain't gonna come to the studio. Uh, we got I got finals. I got this. What y'all was studying for? Oh, when we was in school getting a oh, getting a free masters. That. The yeah. free masters. Yeah. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Um, you know, I believe in free education. I do too. And so when I get opportunities that are three ninety nine, I consider them, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And so on this consideration, it was get your master's and then you teach for three years, all of which were paid in oh, you know? So mm-hmm. we're in the school system teaching. Right. But we got the masters and support. It's of... hard. <laughs> That's what she's not saying. It's hard. <laughs> teaching and PG is hard. Hard. Teaching itself in itself yeah. is hard. Everywhere and, school, and every right? everywhere in every square, them teachers. It don't matter. I'm yeah. in middle school. My God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in high school. And you know, I just didn't <laughs> know that it was gonna be what it was. Yeah. Shout out to the career teachers. Like the this education. is what yeah. y'all went this to. This is what y'all for. decided early y'all, on. Like y'all knew y'all wanted y'all to were, be this. Y'all were built for this. Hands and I down. Wasn't. Hands yeah. down, I I pray y'all. Triple blessings because yeah. after my in three abundance. years, <laughs> I am out in a bunch. Yeah, and 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 I think um, like I was saying, like it's dope that y'all did that, and I I'm like, damn, <laughs> they got they they studying studying. Just yeah, yeah, it was, you know it, was a, yeah. it was it was a little more it than was I like, thought it was I had to be. take. Y'all was like, yo, I gotta take a break. I can't do music right now. My mind's not there. Yeah, yeah. And then I thought about. it. I was like, yeah. And I then then I looked at Lena. Cause you know she in middle mm-hmm. school now, and I said, "Yeah, I know what you're going through." <laughs> yeah, 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 attitudes. You know everything. It's it's a mixed emotion. The actual teaching is not yeah. the hard part. It is everything else yeah. around it. It's stuff like, that come with it. You There's know, because come coming into education with a government background in uh of any kind, local, state, or federal, mm-hmm. and I've been in all three. Mm. Hello. Okay. I've been in the government side of employment. Yeah. So to go into education and you look at infrastructure and you're like, oh, these are like, what is it, fail safe points? Like there there's all these points are parts in this infrastructure that is like, I'm surprised that this is how education is it's like being built handled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because 
You can what? see the you can see what's really going on. Right. Yeah. And yeah. you I'm looking from a different lens. There's a lot of people that I've worked with that have only been teachers. So that's the only experience that they have. Right. So mm-hmm. they're like, oh, this is just how it is. And I never take this is how it is as an answer. That's yeah, I hate that. N- oh God. That's the, that's yeah. the Marine thing. They, oh, oh my we, God. this this is how we do it. Nah, dog. Right. <laughs> nah. It got to be done. another way. We right. could do it a little differently. Mm-hmm. But first and foremost, the teachers need to be paid more. I don't know. Oh who needs my to God. That. Um I don't know yes. what campaign needs to be started. I really, in my heart, thought, I mean, I still got a little bit of time left on my ticket, but I thought I was going to be in there with the teacher strike. Just I thought that I we thought were going to pull one out. That we was all going to band together and be like, hey, y'all need to get paid more. Everybody, all these teachers, we should all but what happened, out. though? It just hasn't... I, You know, I brought it up there. to a couple of yeah. teachers. They're just like, oh, no, we couldn't do that. I said, what? If y'all all quit, they would have to. Yeah. They would have to. They would have to figure it yeah, out. Yeah, I, res- I respect the hell out of teachers because I, yeah. I had to think about it. Like, you, you with these kids at least eight hours a day. Mm-hmm. So that's that's as a student, this is my work schedule. Yeah. As a teacher, this is your work schedule. So mm-hmm. you're working eight to nine plus hours a day, right? Mm-hmm. And you're getting mixed emotions every hour or every 55, however yeah. long your yeah. class right, right. is, right? Mm-hmm. And you're getting mixed emotions from these kids. And then you have to go back home and then t- turn it off. Mm-hmm. But it's hard because you know you start caring for those kids, right? Because you know what it was like being that kid that couldn't afford some, or being that kid that just got stuff going on at home. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. And then got to come to school, and then you know some of them might lash out or whatever. But it takes a lot of mental to be a teacher. You get what I'm saying? Because yeah, like I've been that rap. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it takes a lot of mental to do that. Mm-hmm. But for a teacher. You know what I'm saying? I think it's up there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's definitely it's, up there. It's, I think that's what makes it one of the hardest things. Yeah. And I don't mm-hmm. think I... That's probably... The workload one caught me off guard, like, going mm-hmm. into it. Smooth off guard. I was like, I'm, that's a lot. I thought I was just coming to in plan. here. Two yeah. plus two in it. Right. But, all right, we'll figure that out. But going into the mental and emotional, like, availability and support that you have to be able to have, Mm-hmm. it's like, that's one of the things, like, if I'm having a bad day, when you work for the government, I'm going to go sit at my desk, and right? I don't have to interact. Or I don't call right. out me, I'm going to call out. Yeah, or call out all of those things, <laughs> which calling out as a teacher, oh my goodness, it's more work. I have to have sub plans. What are we doing here? Right. I might as well come. I got to yeah. write a plan. Yeah. But like, you have so to So you got to write available. a plan for the substitute teacher. To do yeah. in your classroom while you're gone. So it was like, I have to plan to wow. call out. And I then have if, to have emergency sub plan so that right. just in case something really does happen, like, that there's something for them to do. So and all of this engaged. stuff is already premeditated and pre-made it before be. you before you, you even go out. Yeah, if you go out. Yeah, and don't let me want to go out for four days, like and really take a treat myself. Like yeah. right now, I have to do extra work to get it to get it prepared so that right. they have something to do for the four days. Jesus Christ, it's intense. So but, it's like all these plans, and these plans go to who? Um, to take, your department chair yeah. or somebody so that In they the can like head, yeah, yeah. They can give it to mm-hmm. the, the sub. Because the thing is, is I don't just plan one math lesson plan, right? I have kids that have different, you know, Levels. I'm a fifth grade yeah. Yeah. math teacher and I have some students that are at second grade yeah. in math. So I have to create one lesson plan that can that bring on. the second grader up, but also continue to give a rigor for my fifth graders that are at seventh and eighth grade. Yeah. So one lesson plan turns into like five. Jesus Christ. It's yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. See, but, and that's the thing, and I'm learning that because, you know, we go I went to school, you know, I went to a performing arts school, ooh, elementary and, and and middle school. You you was went, were you in place? Hmm? Were you in place? You in the ballet? <laughs> <laughs> you had to take dance, didn't you? I did have to take dance. Yep, I uh, I wasn't in no I wasn't in no ballet. <laughs> okay, because right. I was a drummer. I was in a band. Okay, so, okay. So that's how I, I bypassed right. that. Okay, but, okay, okay. But Jim, half of the semester was dance, mm. and what I kind? still I oh ballet like plie, oh. stretch, yeah, passe, all of that. Okay, with the terminology. All of that, right? Okay. And I still to this day I remember Miss <laughs> Thornton because Miss Thornton was was fine as hell. <laughs> And I See? didn't understand, See? you know, so that's what kept my See? focus because she put me in front. Like, so she, you know, you know how they had the mirrors in the dance, yeah. in the dance classes? <laughs> so I would be right behind her. Mm-hmm. So when we stretching, I'm right behind her. You see? So that was my motivation as, you know, <laughs> an elementary middle school kid because I'm mm-hmm. like, man, I don't want to be this. I want to play basketball. I want to play sports. Yeah. I want to do something. 
but it, it it gave me a newfound respect because like that damn shit ain't easy. It, yeah, no, it's technical. It is. And we did, you know what I mean? We did, we did like in class like recitals. We didn't mm-hmm. do like on a stage. I, mm-hmm. I left that to the, the people that wanted to do that. And, and <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? I stuck with the drums and the cymbals and the bass drums and stuff yeah. like that. So I didn't initially like do any, but I definitely had, you had to do it. You had to yeah. do every, you had to do choir. You had to do it all. You had to do something, but I stuck with, with, with the band because you know what I mean? Mr. Mac was the coldest out in Detroit. So. The coldest. The coldest. Know, that's right. And then the Mac. my high school um, band director, he was trying to get every kid from my middle, uh, my middle school, my uh, area academy because Mr. Mac taught him and I didn't know that until mm. he, I got there and he literally was grabbing all the drummers. But I didn't want to be a band geek. I wanted to play sports. I thought that was weak. Come to find out. Mm. That's where all the, the girls band was at. Is where and it's that's at. where all the that's where all the turn up was at. So I would come I'm like, bro, how time. you out of school? Like how you out of class? Like, bro, how you why you ain't in class? Yeah. Bro, I got band. I got band practice. Like, what? Oh taking shit. Taking trips. Okay. Taking okay. trip. And they end up going to play in the Rose Bowl. They was See? the best band. Oh nice. See? Um, they represented Detroit in the uh, Rose Bowl one year. Um, but yeah, nah, I had to, I had to stick with my music. But, you know, yeah, I get it. I mean, but the, so the bigger goal though, y'all, you know, is that wh- why we did this masters because we have a nonprofit called Dream Factory Incorporated. Yeah, where we give high school black and brown kids exposure to STEM and counseling services. So that is the bigger thing. Science, technology, and uh, uh, science, technology, engineering, engineering and math. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I ain't trying to cut me out. Yeah, I'm try sorry. to cut the math yeah. wizard out over here. Sorry, she sorry. is. You, Nick is um the Einstein. She is. She's literally one of the smartest people I know. But I still need help with this finance class. Yeah, it's no problem. What you got? You. It's just that got, shit just hard. Numbers. That, listen to me. So look, my dad was an accountant. So you know, I tried to. You know, I went to school to become an accountant at Mason, whatever. Well, I started at um, Nova. Then from Nova, I was just like, Nah, this ain't it. <laughs> Let me go. I still want to stay in business. So yeah. that's when I switched to marketing. You know, I switched to marketing. I'm thinking like, Okay, I'm cool. I don't gotta do account no more. They were like, Nah, you got account three hundred. You got yeah, you yeah. got you got a uh, finance three hundred. I said, Hold up. Like what? The, what is this? You, gotta be a, you need the budget. And then I start understanding it. So that's when that perpetuity and all of that stuff start making yeah. sense to me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's what they talking about, right? I said, you ain't gonna never see no money. This perpetuity, never. like, it's forever, 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 ever, ever. Yeah. So nah. Um. Yeah. I think I think the educators definitely should be paid more six figures at least. Six figures. At, at least, least. Within, within the first, I mean, within and in the first area, four years of you teaching, yeah. you should be making six because figures. I think yeah. it's to me like you. They telling you, oh, you need a degree to be a teacher, and then when you get a degree, all right, you need this degree to get to a get higher pay. Money. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now once you ended. get this degree, you need this degree to get mm-hmm. more money, and it's like what? Right. But when are the teachers supposed to go to school if they have to teach? Yeah. Because you doing prac app every day with kids. You know right, what I'm saying? Yeah. That you want them be. to have quality lesson plans. Right. You know what I'm saying? So then they're at home working on the weekends. And don't let them want to, you know, I do not. coach a team. Mm. I don't know. They really ain't got no really time. Really ain't got no time. Yeah. Don't have no, no kids. Right. And don't let them have a family. Right. They yeah. over here raising your children. Yep. But they and can't they, raise right. their children. But yep. in order to get more money so they can have a better quality of life, they in turn have to then spend all their extra time mm-hmm. going back to school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just unfair. So this, this dream factory. hmm and SNM. Mm-hmm. How many kids do, like, have y'all worked with kids already? Or is mm-hmm. it still a, oh, y'all still building? We have a couple of curriculum. That's all. <laughs> we have, we've been working, we've done pilot programs and worked mm-hmm. with um, high school students, middle school students online during quarantine. Um, we did the Seed and Me program, which was agricultural engineering. And uh, it kind of exposed them to just that whole process of being able to grow their own food and mm-hmm. what it looks like, the science of that. And, and the how connections that, to therapy. And the yeah. connections to therapy. Because I think one of the things that the school system does not do a good job at is teaching students how to control their emotions. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, so just in regular occurrences in life, like, they don't handle conflict or just their well, emotions well at right. all. At right. all. And so and that's what gets them in trouble. And that's what causes the depression and then interjects social media on there. It's just... 
layers and layers of things that are not taught to them that they're Mm -hmm. trying to navigate on their own, which is taken away from a lot of things they're trying to be successful at because they can't get off their phones. Like I have students that come to me in tears about Instagram and things that their friends have posted Mm. about them. And I was like, well, one, they're probably not your real friends. Right. And block them. Yeah. Just don't engage. Get off social media. But that's like a pull for them that no one is really teaching them. Like we get on social media and we be like, this actually is bad for you. But we have the understanding to like, I'm going to just get off of here for a while. I'm going to delete the app. Or or you're using it for a business. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And you figure out, I just need to use it like this. Right. And I barely want to use that. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have Mm -hmm. that navigation. They're like, well, all my friends are on here. How am I talking to them? I'm like, you talk to them when we be at school. Right. That's fine. It's like, no, but everybody's on the so that's their concept. So that's all that's they, their form of communication. Yeah, right. they grew up with yeah. that versus we didn't always have yeah. right. We didn't even have cell phones. phones. Huh? That part. Yeah. We had the rotary dial. But also we had AIM. It's the messenger. Yeah. When, in the 2000s, yes. Yeah. Yo, one of ASL. my students was like, hey, <laughs> um, were you living when the phone used to be on the wall and you had to like, and they didn't know? I said a rotary phone. I was like, yeah, what about it? Here goes. He was like, well, did you have fun back then? Here's another one of my students. Of course she didn't. I was wow, like, <laughs> I was like, that was what? the best time of my life. Yeah. Yeah, we was outside. We was outside. Like, outside. we were the real version outside. of outside. Oh, the right. Real version. Real outside. Until the, original... the street lights came on. Okay. Right. Like, man. Real outside. They they don't even go outside. Like, they inside. They're very Talking much... about they outside. Right. Yes. They just, you're just at another establishment. You know, we were mm-hmm. outside in the elements. Yeah. I, um, I think uh, the the success of what y'all are doing in this dream factory is gonna boost y'all to a whole another level too, because um, STEM is so dope, and I wish we had it when I was growing up because I was I was a little I was a, I was a little nerd. I ain't even gonna lie, I was. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Because for one, I was a midget. I was short. <laughs> what? Yeah, man. Look, I was four eleven until eleventh grade. What? Yeah, I was four eleven until they eleven. Stre- Did they stretch you when you went into the military? Nah. So what happened? They like stretched. I was, I was tripping 4, because 11? everybody in my family, even my my grandma on my dad's side, was like five nine. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? My grandfather was six two. My dad six two six three. My uncle six two six three. Mm-hmm. My other uncle six you five six six. You know what I'm saying? That is so. So strange. then my cousins, um, rest in peace, Quez. Quez was like six one six two. Um, my cousin, uh, my, my cousin Buki, Damon, he, uh, he's six, seven, you know what I'm saying? Whoa. And he's younger than me. So then Whoa. I got my cousin Road. That's oh. we two days apart, a year and two days apart. He, he a year younger six, than me. He's six, four. My brother, like Ooh, five, nine. I know your feelings was hurt. And my other cousin, like five, nine. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yo, why the hell? I'm <laughs> what so happened? Damn short. <laughs> what happened? But Somebody I explain I, it to I'm me. I'm like, all right, I know what it is. I didn't like milk drinking. I didn't like drinking milk. My cousin, really? you I, think that's I, it? I hated milk. I, Cause you know that's what's the thing. Milk yeah. grow bone, make it right, bone. Right. Does the body good? All of this crap yeah. they used to put on, on the um, commercials. <laughs> so my cousin used to drink. Buki used to drink milk with everything. My grandma would make steak. He'd drink milk. Everything was milk. He's six seven. Six seven. Mm-hmm. Ah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. So like, even my aunts. Mm-hmm. All my aunts is like five nine and up, except for my auntie Shorty. She's the only short what? one. You know what I mean? So like it was five, gonna be six. you and Shorty. So it was the yep. milk. You wasn't but my mom milk. is like five two, five mm-hmm. three. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, this ain't right. So you know what I mean? You know, I was praying, man, at night. You know what I mean? They was <laughs> God, God, you was on bending. And God knees? said, We Listen, gonna say your prayers at night. Man, yeah. On my little bunk bed I had. <laughs> well, if I can you know please, please just please. two more inches. Because I was playing safety at as a freshman. On the JV team, and I couldn't see nobody. Like, and then we and would practice, sure couldn't we would practice varsity, and I literally <laughs> almost, I like, I shout out to Craig. I injured the one of the running backs one day. On purpose? No, because like, I couldn't, see, I'm thinking it was a pass, and then next thing you know, I just see this dude running straight up, straight at me. I had to do something. You know what okay. I mean? I, t- I tackled him, but I tackled him wrong. I like uh-huh. tackled him and uh, like tripped him yeah. and messed up his ankle or whatever. But um, it's nah, man. I, after that, I was like, "Yo, man, I think I'm just gonna stick with baseball because I played baseball at the same mm-hmm. time." Yeah, you don't need a lot of height for baseball. Yeah, yeah. So that's like, a good good choice. So when so did 11, your height take off? Eleventh grade, I was five three. Ooh, okay. And then and then when the rest senior of your year, I was off. five seven. Beginner senior year, okay. okay. And then after senior year, I was five eleven. It was crazy. Like I had a late ass growth spurt. My voice though had changed tenth uh-huh. grade. Like I had a deep voice. But I was, a, I was 4'11". That's 4'11". You know what I'm saying? Oh, and I was in a choir. He's up here. 
okay. in the choir senior year. So, you know what I mean? You well, was in the so front like, row of the choir. So when you were 4'11", did you have a girlfriend? Yeah, I did. Was I she did. taller than you? Nah, Karen was actually shorter Karen. than Karen? Karen. Yeah, she was a black girl, though. Okay. You know, Detroit, we we were about 90% black in, in yeah, Osborne. Okay, Shout okay. out to Osborne. But no, it was not, that was her name, Karen. Karen yeah, Jones. Her, but her dad, her dad, it was weird. Her dad was like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Mm-hmm. Old country dude. But from, she was shorter than 4'11"? Yeah, but her, her mom. Oh, was short, she was shorter. Little. Her mom was shorter than her. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. They say tall men like short women. Yeah, yeah they so, do. So after that, you know, I, I got my height and, you know. Um, but before that, like the school thing was always my thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like my dad would be like, yo, you get a good, you get 3.0 and up. I go take it and we'll get a game. We go to Toys R Us and get this. So like, mm-hmm. even with the girls now, so Atlanta had got a 3.7 this mm-hmm. year. Nice. You know, I took her to Claire's. Tootie and them, don't, they don't even get grades. They get letters. I mean, yeah, they get numbers. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm not, oh, okay. the fuck is numbers? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I'm, so, so her mom was like, she, she was like, Tootie did good too. So I was like, all right, come on, we both, we'll, 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 I'll take That's both That's what I'm talking about, so I'm we talking about stuff. So, um, nah, but school always been a thing with me. Math was my thing until I got the ninth grade. What happened yeah, in ninth grade? Algebra. I had I I know algebra dope. I knew algebra in eighth seventh grade. You know what I mean? But ninth grade, the teacher was just Mr. Castile was trash. Like the fact like, that you can remember your teacher's name yeah, is crazy to because me. Because it's like you know these are different Those moments in my life that where stuck mm-hmm. with you, that yeah. stuck with me. It's like yo, bro, like, I, I never had a, I that? never had an F. Never at man. I, you talking about bringing that to my my mama house? Did you deserve oh, yeah. it? Up? No. Okay. So look. Did so you do all your work? I did all my work, but he okay. just didn't like. He didn't like me because one day I walked out of the, the classroom because I had to pee. My mama always told me like, if you got to pee, leave. Don't yeah. sit your butt in there and pee on yourself. Well, yeah, right. that's fair. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I always. I sat. I did it. I left. He would never let me come back to class, and he wow. wouldn't let me get homework, like get the work from the class. So Yikes. I got an F that whole semester, right? You know, back in the day, the teachers used to have a lot of power. Oh, a lot yeah, of they power. used to a be able to do whatever. My mama yeah. got failed in elementary school because the teacher didn't like her. Yeah. And it was, she had to repeat a whole grade. I said, that's, yep. that would never happen today. These parents yeah. would be on a riot yeah. and on the <laughs> podcast and yeah. at the doors. Today. Yeah, so summer, <laughs> the summer of that, uh, of that year, what was that, 90, 99, 2000? Mm-hmm. Summer 2000, I, I went to summer school and got an A. The only thing is, it would just suck. Like, I had to get up in early in the morning, walk down to, um, I, luckily, I went to the school that was around the corner from my grandma's house, Kettering, um, and I would go there, do my work, come home, and, you know what I mean, fin- still be a kid, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But then wake up in the morning, go to class, and uh, finish it out. But yeah, I ended up getting an A, and I was like, see, I told you, like, it wasn't me. Right. But, like, my mm-hmm. mama, she was, she wanted well, Not having that. Yeah. Because, yeah. mm. you know, back then, the parent-teacher conferences, too, like, it was yeah. all what the teacher said. Right, you know right, I mean? right, right, right. Like, are you really believing this dude? Like, mm. I had to go to the bathroom. Right. Yeah. So after that, yeah. Um, but no, nah, music, music, and 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 school always was my thing. So like, even seeing the, my daughters doing it, and it's like, like, yeah, why are they teaching you this way? <laughs> this math way they teaching them is like, it's very different. It's, it's supposed to open up their mind to be able to process concepts better. And the younger they thing. start with that, the better it will work out for them later. But it does not make sense if you didn't learn it. Right. right. And then they had, so they transferred from Aunt Beers, which was right here in Alabama in D.C. They transferred from Aunt Beers and went to Key Elementary all the way in um, Georgetown. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely different. <laughs> environment. <laughs> I'm like, what the f-? And they transferred during the pandemic. Okay. Okay. So that was, I think that was even harder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Trying to understand this whole a whole, math, new, culture. Yeah, a whole right. new culture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, you had some kids living in Florida. They got two houses. They was rich as hell. One one friend, they right next to the, the Germany uh embassy. Mm. So it was like uh what? That's a big okay. culture. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was definitely a big thing. So um no nah, man, I think the dream factor is super dope for y'all. And I think that um Shit, y'all just you mean y'all just shouted it out, so it's definitely gonna be, you know what I mean? In my in my and we got a spot for you. What you? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we, we got a we curriculum. We have already talked about yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, we got a curriculum. Hold math, up. math and music. Y'all already had a y'all already had a little a little plan for. Yeah, for you. We just have yeah. we're just setting Man, everything up. up. I mean, we gotta have it. In, we gotta write it up. Make sure yeah. it aligns yeah. with everything. But it's math. Give and it music. to your manager. See yeah, if, you know, give it to your you, team. Make see sure what your writer is. Yeah, make sure you get what you need from it. It's beneficial, but you know, to come and. Explain to the the students 
the aspects of math that are involved in music. Mm -hmm. So it's like in producing and beat making yes. and all of the numbers and BPMs the games. Yeah. And, and then mixing and being able to cut and look at the sound waves and stuff like that. Stuff like that. So like the music and the math, how that comes together, we got a right. you know, spot yeah. for you to Did I see y'all um Hello Alice? Yeah. 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 We Yo, know. If y'all yeah. don't know about Hello Alice, y'all need to any business, small business, any mm. business, but mainly small business owners, um, Hello Alice definitely can help you with your nonprofit LLCs yeah. to get your um to get funding. money. Yeah, get yeah. funding yeah, for get it. Funding. Yeah, we've mm -hmm. applied for a get grants. That's there. what it is. It's grants. And yeah. shout out to Chat GPT. They can help you write for those grants. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of yes. people don't know that. And um yeah. So let's get to something else. We have one of the ladies. Um she ain't single no more. Oh, she is like, not. She, she is, is not lady. single no more. She is not. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nick over here and my, my guy, fellow Raven fan. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? My guy Joe. Unnecessary flex. Yeah. Joe. <laughs> Ravens fan. Yikes. Came out of nowhere. I don't know where. I mean, you know, quarantine. He was a quarantine bae. Oh, you know he was quarantine bae? Yeah. Okay. He swooped me up. Took me off the streets. Yeah. <laughs> And it's been quarantine ever since. Basically. Quarantine. You know, I was a little nervous. I was like, quarantine, you know, this isn't real life. We see each other all the time. You know, the, the world's going to open back up. It's going to be different. We're going to have different movement. He yeah. was like, you know, the world's open back up, but we ain't yeah. got to change. And I was like, all right, that was a good answer. We're going to rock with it. Yeah. And we rocked and we rocked and we, you know, rock not stop. Now we here. Yeah. So how is it being married? Married life is... A whole host of emotions, right? It is super fun. You get to learn yourself mm -hmm. so much. Even more. Even the more. Yeah. You think you know yourself. Mm -hmm. Somebody else be like, you know you do that? Yeah. I did not. I did not know I did that. Yeah. Little things that, like, you didn't know were going to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. When I say a big deal, it's not like... Life or death. Deal. Yeah. It's not. I just mean like topic of conversation. Right. Like I thought I had grocery shopping and cooking down to a science. But I input one more person into the mix. And now I don't feel like I know. I don't got a good grasp on it anymore. One season is off a little one time. Yeah. It's like I'm trying to cook differently. I'm like I'm cooking for more, trying to make it last a little longer. You eat a little more. I'm yeah. trying to, you know, overcome Yo, that. Eat. I feel like men Why eat, do eat a lot. Because and I just wasn't prepared like, for it. Because I think be he that was, hungry. I think he was eating cute when I would cook before. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he was putting on the front. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like eating cute. Like being <laughs> respectable. Oh, I've been there. He was putting on the Is front. that what that was? Being yeah. respectable of yeah, like. Yeah, he's being respectable. He's being respectful. And I appreciate mm, this tastes that. good, babe. Mm -hmm. No, so it's not yeah. the taste. It's the quantity. Yeah. So it was like, I'm giving you, I'm fixing your plate. Like I put this on it, this on it, good. And it's so your man's you, plate, honey. You're eating. And so I'm thinking that you're you're fed. Did, did you Whole find this time. out? Did you find this out like at a like a family event where he, he was eating good, or did you find it out just y'all two eating? No, just us two. Like once we we didn't live together prior to being married, and so we got married, we got our house, and then we lived together for the first time. And so this has been all of the little <laughs> things that have mm -hmm. come out just in like laundry. Yeah, how we fold in the towels. Mm, <laughs> that, mm. How you, you fold the towel. Ah, How you yeah, call yeah, it? Yeah, so yeah. I do, I do a hamburger hot dog three p. You know what I'm saying? Like hamburger hot. So you like, take the towel and you fold it the fat way, so it's yeah. a hamburger, and then you make it short, which is like a hot dog, it's and then slim. you do and then you do uh -huh. the three fold, three fold, so it looks nice and clean on. What the, do you mean, try? When you say try fold, what yeah, you, mean? you make it skinny. You know, you, you do the oh, skinny, you it skinny, and it's it's tall. Yeah. yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Then you fold it over. Uh -huh. I might be doing it the same way. It's just yeah, it's just just vertical. Right, and okay. then it might be just so maybe, but yeah. all I care about is that it looks the same when I put it on that shelf. Right, is that what? Do you have the the just one bin facing you? Or so do you have the so we the little, little S or whatever that little thing is. <laughs> you know what I'm talking the, about? Oh no, I have the the long. I want the just the, the fat one. side, the fat, yeah, 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 facing me. Y'all yeah. just see y'all. Mm -hmm. Faces, but not, because, because I know, I know. You know that thing yeah. that that thing just yeah. tickled, it's something Man. that like that's not the conversation you sit down Clearly like when you, you date yeah. you date be like yo how you fold your towels nobody talks Even about a t -shirt. that yo the t shirts he has a t <laughs> he got a t shirt folder I ain't trying to put on he got t shirt t shirt it. folder but I don't fold my t shirts like that so when he be folding my clothes and I be like don't fold that because I'm gonna just unfold it so that it fits in my drawer and he was like you don't want me to help you and I was like I so do. he do the laundry. 
He does. Shout out to Joe. <laughs> Joe with Shout the laundry. Joe. He does the laundry. I do not like laundry. He does the laundry. He, <laughs> yeah. he folds it. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I, yeah, and it I is that. it blessing. is a blessing. You know? Hey. Because hey. me and laundry. But also, because I put all my... Maybe I'm a savage with my laundry, but I just put it all in there. Yeah. And, and I don't, get it out. No, I get it out. No, and I put it in the dryer. I don't like separate. Like, oh, I don't want this to be dried. And I don't want this material. Yeah. I'm a hang dry this. I'm not that. I don't do that. I'm not that particular, but I do do whites and then colors. No, I don't do that. Uh-uh. I gotta have white. Nah, it's but there's some people like white. no reds, blacks. Oh, no, yeah, no. like um, like yeah, yeah. yeah. When I was married, like she would be like, yeah, like the, everything. The I'm like purples. <laughs> I'm like yo, that purple and blue go together. And red, why you can't just put them in there? She like, no, you can't. Red got too much dye. This guy. So this like the first time I mean. you wash it, like I do know that, but like in general, I'm gonna put all my clothes in there. And so he has a more particular way of doing the laundry, so it's best. That he like, I really do try, but then yeah. I don't know how I'm supposed to know that these jeans need to air dry, but these jeans can go in there. There's nothing got on the to tag that's yeah. clothes, okay? Yeah. Got so, to. Yeah. So now I'm shrinking clothes. We got to get new <laughs> Damn. jeans. Damn. Not so, yeah. shrinking clothes. So shout out he to said the towels. Yeah. 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 He does the Girl laundry. Folks. Shout out to well. Joe. I do the grocery shopping. I'm okay. I can do that. So you get you get the detergent. What detergent y'all get? So I need the free and clear. Um. But we are, we're trying to incorporate a little bit more smell goods. Because sometimes it's like irritating my skin. And so I just was like, now nah, I need to know. Which one? Free and clear what? Huh? Whatever's at Costco, but just doesn't have any type of um, I, I think scent it's in it. A, is it a brand? I think it's Kirkland yeah. brand. It's free and clear. It ain't got no dye in it. No dye yeah. in it, no, no smell, smell. But it's just going to clean your clothes. What's, I'm trying to think. Pure, it's Pure Cell. I think that's what. Pure Pure Cell. I think it's Pure Cell. That's what Bonita used for her and the girls. Right? Oh, okay. So like sometimes like I go over there and use their laundry, lose their laundry, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I, you she probably be like, get on her nerves. man, she be like, uh, you bringing some laundry detergent, right? I said, no, y'all got these pots. She said, no, you you need to get these. Uh, you need to get pure cell. <laughs> get the right pots. In, I'm right? like, what the? All right, cool. So I use it, but it smelled good. And then she got like some little, some little thing. Little um, it's like a little uh porcupine, little fish, little. Oh, that you put in the dryer. Yeah, you put in the dryer. Yeah, yeah. So you don't need dry sheets. Yeah, that joint smell treat. good. I said, yeah. yo, what is this? Yeah. yeah, I think I'm gonna get that. Yeah, that joint dope. I ain't gonna lie, cause I I be taking it out like, and Judy be like, Eddie, you, you uh, you forgot to put the thing back in the uh, dryer. That's right, girls. Hold your daddy. And I'm like, you have such good girls. I'm like, what? Like, what? What? What is this thing? Like, why y'all even got this in there? She like, that's what makes the clothes smell good. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. So it's like I'm still learning, divorced and all. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> damn. But yeah, like, what does it? Um, I know Joe's Joe's musical too, right? Yeah, he plays the yeah. trumpet and the drums. Yeah. So how does that? How does that? Do y'all get like sessions in, in the crib? <laughs> you know what I mean? So in my mind, sessions? I thought we was gonna be doing a little jam session, yeah. but he's he's trying to get back into his into playing the trumpet. But we don't have like jam sessions, but what we do, we appreciate, you know, like live music. We'll Mm -hmm. listen to like the orchestra arrangement, like New Deco on YouTube. But we're always listening to a live music, something on YouTube. Like when Mm -hmm. we sit back and chill, we gonna have, you know, get us, he'll make like a Manhattan or old fashioned and we'll be listening to all the live music. That's that's like one of my new favorite drinks, the old fashioned. Old fashioned? Do he got like the, uh, the little like copper cup too? No, so the I think you use those for the mules. <laughs> for the mules. When you get ginger beer. And shout out to Costco. They just had a case of ginger beer on sale. I don't know if y'all need that, but yeah. scoop that up. That's going to elevate your mules. Yeah. It's a quality crisp ginger beer. Yeah. But need that. Nah, I might get them the copper cups, but we, you know, in the home improvement life, we built mm. a little bar section. Okay, y'all got, a, y'all got a little, yeah. y'all got a barista together. over there. Because yeah. they're engineers. Yeah. They're both engineers. Yeah, so. so we, you know, a little this, a little that. We tried to repurpose some furniture, uptake it, you know what I'm saying? So... We got to come over and he can he'll make you a nice Christian. Yeah, Joe got to come yeah. over and play the trumpet too. You know what I mean? <laughs> You've been doing, Let me get you, some loot. Not some loot. Yeah. Well, well, you know, so like I got uh some shakers, you know, little okay. marimbas and, you know, like not marimbas, but um, I got the name, the maracas. maracas. Yeah, I got maracas. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've been sampling my own thing, doing like loot. Oh, and stuff wow. Like that. Come so on, like, Ryan Leslie oh, in the studio. Wow. Yeah, man. You know, because Esquire, you know, that's, that's his man's, but. I ain't gonna lie. When I first watched yes. that YouTube video of uh, Ryan Les, I said, "No, this dude literally just ordered a pocket trumpet." Yeah. You still got the pocket? Trumpet? Man, that joint right in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm trying to. I'm still trying to learn. Like, so this mm-hmm. year coming, 
piano and the trumpet is the two things that mm, I'm really trying nice. to like learn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Deja, I need your help because Tootie, um, Tootie wants to sing. You know, she's so always Benita welcome. asked me, she like, hey, um, can you find something for Tootie? Because Lana, you know, Lana doing yeah. volleyball, right, softball. Yeah, right. yeah. Tootie does softball too, but Tootie actually really can sing. And she be singing her little heart out in the basement when I be over there and stuff. You know Aww. what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn, she really got, she got tone. She can sing. Like, she can mm-hmm. hold a note. Yeah. So it's like, I well, need to Well, let's get on a find, record. Let's put her on it. Let's yeah, just put her I in need a, to find something Start her with some backgrounds. Let's just get yeah. some background. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Yeah. So, yeah. Hi, Joe. Come over here. We can get the we can get the trumpet going. Come over there. <laughs> a little we family get, you know, session. We get a whole you know session saying? going. Okay. Yeah. You know no, we saying? can do that. We got a good space for it. We yeah. Get that right. You got it set up already? Yeah, we got the studio set up, and when we were preparing for the live recording for the concert, we mm-hmm. the band filled out the the live the live space. Right. And so mm-hmm. we had it packed down there, all seven of us. You know, everybody had a little space, a little corner, backgrounds, the full set, bass, guitar, electric guitar, piano. Yeah. You know. So it's it's set up. When I do um, piano lessons, oh, the kids come down. They was like, "Wow, nice." Can I do drums? It's like. We're here for piano. Yeah. You no, know, honey. We're going to work on piano first. For the right your price, we're going to get you to the drums. Can, right. And then yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, book you we'll assess session. if we can go on over to the drums. We got to start with piano first. But they be real, you know, excited about the, the space. Also, you know, inviting space. And, and learning to play the set. That's another thing. I never knew how to play the set. Oh, really? I was Because I, I was just marching marching band. Mm. I never played a set. It is different. And it's a whole, yeah. yeah. yeah like yeah, your yeah. foot yeah. hitting you the drum. And, yeah, you got to be yeah. able to mm-hmm. coordinate and be... Having the right mind to get everything to sound right because it sounds so good when I hear like live drums. Absolutely, yeah, it's a good feeling. Like it's a different type of feel. Um, so what's next for y'all? So we're getting things that. together. I know, well, it's you know Did the whole little <sighs> looked up. <sighs> <laughs> we have things lined up for this year. We are putting together. We're going back to like a rollout. Like, mm-hmm. we're doing a work. Because before we got away from that, was just putting yeah. stuff out. And, but we really sat down, got our rollout together. Um, definitely starting at the top of the year, just building traction with uh, some of the live footage we shot with Kadeem through our, mm-hmm. We shot, he edited some things for us. Um, we're going to have a shoot with him, things like that, just to get the ball rolling so that when we do drop our live mm-hmm. uh, instrumentation of our live recording, like, we'll have that to put out and then we have some music that we're probably going to drop too as well so nice expect to hear forward. expect to hear and see a lot from us in 2020 yeah okay. we got a lot of things growing the setup is coming everything's going to drop be released because mm-hmm. we set on a lot of stuff so 2024 is coming out yeah the year of release I'm not going to sit on stuff no more yeah you mean it <laughs> <laughs> no it's, it's happening Queen David is, is coming out yeah Queen David Look, man, before we get out of here, okay. I always do gym class. Gym class. Gym class. G E M. Gym class. Gym class. Nice. I so, like that. Wow. So what what gym can y'all leave? Y'all can have one at peace. What gym can y'all leave to, you know, the the relationship worth more than money podcast? Uh fans and people just in general, even if they're not a fan. Like what's something as a Y'all want to leave? Um, I will say this is the first thing that came to my mind. I think if you always take the position of being a servant to someone, it will never come up void. That's what you're going to say. That's all I got. We are the same person. I'm trying to tell you. Say it again, though. Say it again. If you you what? Go ahead. If you are always take the position with someone that you're meeting, old, new, whatever, um, if you always take the position of being a servant to them, that will never come up void. And so what I mean by that is like, even like with you, Tweez, if I'm always approaching our relationship as, oh, how can I help you? What is it that you need? What you need. You know what I'm saying? Being a servant to you in our relationship that will always manifest into something bigger. Now, you might not necessarily see it with that person in that season, in that time. Right. But it'll always carry over into something else. Okay. It just has to. It's I feel it. I feel it. I, I definitely feel it. Because it's, it's 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 a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot for people to not even acknowledge that. Right. Yeah. Because I tell people all the time, what you need from me? 
What, what, how can I help? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And if... Uh, what? What? Did I say out? No, I mean, it's the how can I help phrase. Mm-hmm. And it just... The show, New Amsterdam, mm-hmm. the doctor that ran the hospital, that was his approach to everything. His one line was always, well, how can I help? People coming to him with all types of situations they need, they need, or they're just stressed out, they can't figure it out. His line was always, how can I help? And it created such a positive atmosphere Mm -hmm. in the show. But just using that same phrasing just in life in general, how can I help the situation? It's just the way to move forward Mm -hmm. and things. It's always going to be more beneficial to you to be helpful in a situation than to be a detriment in anything that you're doing. So if you're going in with the intention to be helpful, I think that's a big gem. I feel that. I definitely agree with that. You gotta, you have to have some type of humility to just, you know what I mean? Just be an open door. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, Miko, shout out to Miko. Miko always used to tell me, he'd say something like, hey man, this ain't nothing but doorways and hallways. And I'm like, huh? That's nice. I'm like, what are you talking about? He like, doorways and hallways. And I'm like, he would say it all the time. I'm like, like, bro, what are you talking about? Yeah. You know what I mean? He like, look, there's always doorways open and hallways that you can go into, but it's on you to, you know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. To to pursue those doorways and hallways, but every doorway ain't going to be a good doorway. But again, if you just opening up your doors and hallways to people, you know what I mean? A lot of good things that come from that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? Shout out to Miko. Miko definitely, uh, that's how I ended up doing, working with, uh, me and S ended up working with um, Ayla and Carrie Gordy just from, oh, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Doorways and doorways hallways. And just hallways. just, just and build hallways. it, being open and like he would say, he would have me, he would be like, hey man, what you, what you doing tonight? What you doing right now? I'm like, I'm chilling. He's like, hey, meet me here. It'd be like a, a restaurant, seafood like right. restaurant. I ain't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm just pulling yeah, up. Right. And he'd just be sitting there drinking with some some old timers or whatever. Right. And he'd be like, hey man, this my this my man's Tweezy, this, this, and this, and this, and this and that. And then he was like, yo, let's go have a seat over here. And then we'll start talking. He'd be like, hey man, I'm working on this biz marquee thing. I'm working on this. I'm working on this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh shit. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, he's always and you, and you open. you call me? Yeah, and like, wow. you call me, and I literally, I, well, I don't even. I was doing it was, nothing. It was somewhere in Maryland. I still, to this day, because it was funny, when I left that uh, meeting with him, somebody, like, it was cops outside the the the, the establishment, mm-hmm. and somebody did something. I don't know what happened. But uh, I just remember, like, he would always call and be offer me, like, to work with, like, Tommy Davidson. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's a big deal. So I mean... You said it when you were like, it keeps you humble. Yeah. Being humble doesn't mean being taken advantage of. It doesn't mean, you know, getting played. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel right. like sometimes people are like, well, I don't, I, I don't talk your shit. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying don't do that. But I mean, like, there has to be a balance. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've got to have a spirit of humbleness about you because if not, who wants to work with somebody that's not? Yeah. I feel that. Always and hallways. How can I help? How can I help? Yep. Y'all got anything else before we leave up out of here? No, I'm safe. Yeah. It's been an honor. Appreciate y'all, man. You know, you know, it's been a long time. I've been trying to get y'all here since episode <laughs> yes. one. You know, but y'all <laughs> teachers, you know what I mean? We were doing for you know, you got you got husband and wife things going on. Deja, <laughs> Deja just all over the place. I she do. just, you know, yeah. everything. Everywhere. She'd be everywhere. everywhere. So, you know what I mean? Um, next time, mm-hmm. I will have y'all requested things that y'all manager mm-hmm. had requested for y'all. Um, okay. yeah. yeah. So, yeah, like that, man. Uh, we out of here. Relationships Worth More Than Money podcast. Relationships Worth More Than Money podcast. This is ASMR. Yeah. 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 I'm talking relationships worth more than money. No time for the fake or the phony.